Hello, welcome to Super Return Asia 2019. I'm Sarah Clark coming to you from Hong Kong and I'm joined by Manish Singhal who's the founding partner of Pi Ventures. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sarah. Now, the topic we want to talk about today is the emerging sectors to watch out for, in particular, uh, deep tech in India. Has there ever been a more exciting time, basically, to be in India, to, to look at these the, the growth in these uh, deep tech startups? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I've been in the industry for almost 27 years now and built uh, deep tech companies in India. But as an investor, I find really, really excited today uh, to see kind of variety of deep tech, not just digital, but beyond digital, in variety of spaces that uh, companies are coming up solving global problems. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It is, it's a super exciting time to be in India for deep tech. And is it a growth in numbers as well as diversity? Yes. And let me give you some examples, uh, right? So uh, we, uh, 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 some, some companies that we have invested in, some we are looking at, uh, uh, we have invested in a breast cancer company. Breast cancer is a global killer across the world and uh, early detection has been a problem in breast cancer. Uh, uh, mammogram and other forms of uh, early detection, you, they try to find the lump in your breast. Whereas Niramai, they look at a thermal picture using AI and they find breast cancer very, very early because they look at the cell growth, abnormal cell growth, which is a direct indicator of breast cancer things like these, then we have, we're also working with a space tech company. You know, just like everything else in the world, satellites are shrinking. Uh, there are more and more satellites under 10 kgs, 20 kgs, 30 kgs, but they have to wait for a long time or pay a premium because most of the rockets support 300 kgs, 400 kgs. So there's a demand and supply cap. So there's a company called Agnicool. They have actually done a 3D printed engines, which can launch satellites as small as 30 kgs up in the sky, made to order and plenty more. Well, so you, you, you mentioned some of the, the star players, or certainly the ones to watch, but the KP, a KPMG report found India ranked third in a startup survey globally, with 13% of the global tech industry leaders indicating its potentials, uh, potential for, for tech breakthroughs. Were there any other areas that you thought, or star players that you think you would identify? Sure, I think deep tech is happening in every area. I gave you an example of health tech. Another example in health tech is, uh, there's a company called Pandorum. What they have done is they have created an artificial cornea in the lab. So almost uh, 28 million people across the world lose their eyesight because of not having uh, access to a cornea to be replaced. This cornea grown in the lab without any human tissue, completely artificial, can provide that uh, alternative. So we are seeing this work across sectors. We see a lot of work in life sciences, space tech. We see a lot of work in batteries. Batteries are again very interesting space. Uh, we see a lot of work in uh, optical computing, quantum computing. So all areas of deep tech, we find something or the other happening in India. So I'm sure KPMG guys have done their work. And would you say the deep tech startups in India, they're the next wave of global disruptors? Absolutely. I think India uh, would probably, is probably right time for India to set their stake, their claim on the world innovation map. Uh, uh, see, what has happened is because of internet, because of uh, borders opening up, if you will, uh, the, the exposure has become global. So when I'm launching a company, I'm not thinking that, okay, what is, uh, you know, India problem? What is this problem? What is Australia problem, Britain problem? The problems you get hit are pretty much global in nature. Space tech, the example I gave you, all these are global problems. Obviously, you start small, but you have a visibility of a global problem, which you can solve by a disruptive mechanism from your tech. Right? So world to me is a very flat when it comes to innovation and uh, that is helping India a lot and India has always had tons of talent so that we are leveraging that, sol looking at the global problem, solving them from India. And looking at the investor side, is there, there also a rise in the investor uh, interest uh, in the niche kind of technology sector due to the diversity and the growth uh, in, this, in this sector? Is so uh, it's funny, there is rise of interest but there is also a chasm, let me explain you that. So. Uh, in India, it has never been easier to start a company. Two people get together, they have an idea, they get a little bit of support uh, from their IITs and other universities or some angels and get started. But it has never been harder to get to a point where a technology can become a business. Most of the large investors come in when there is business. And so how do you fill this chasm? And that's what we at Pi Ventures are very excited to bring, take these ideas which are incubating and take them to a place where you can see a business, right? 
and then other investors can come in. So yes, I think uh, there is growing interest and we want to pioneer that uh, effort in India to create some deep tech companies out of it. Okay, we're looking at the future. What are the trends to look out for? Um, and the ones that are more likely to, uh, going to attract more investor attention uh, in 2019 and down the track? Sure. So uh, in our first fund, we took an approach of backing AI companies. So we understood quite a bit on what AI is, first of all, and how do, how do you build business around it. So I think we are slowly moving towards what I call as AI 2.0. Uh, what does that mean? It basically means three things. It means that there will be a lot of AI first companies, which means companies which, problems which can only be solved by AI. It also means that human plus AI is a very interesting trend because AI cannot solve everything. So you do let the technology do 60% of the job, 40% of the job humans can do, and then you have an augmented solution. We're talking about full stack companies. So AI can do part of it, but you build a whole solution around it and you become full stack. And the last, uh, most important technical trend over there is about using less data. AI in the future is going to be about less data, not more data, which is today an impediment to launch those companies. So using this, uh, understanding these AI trends, we are seeing that these trends are percolating across all sectors and you will see disruptive companies coming in all sectors. You add on to this trend the whole non-digital deep tech, which is in life sciences, which is in space technology, which is in quantum computing, which is in uh, uh, batteries and electrical vehicles, and you've got a whole panorama of sectors that you can solve problems uh, using deep tech. Exciting times ahead. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much, Manish. Thank Singh you, Sarah. For Pleasure. Us. If you'd like to see more conversations like this, you can find us on Twitter. Just look for the hashtag SRAsia. See you next time.